Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 66. On Now You Know. So Jesse, what is this I hear about solving the world's CO2 problems with a GM plant? So uh, they're going to build no, no, something no, no, like no, no, in no, Michigan? No, no, no not and... a... Stop, stop, stop. No, no, it's not a GM plant. GM, genetically modified, and then the plant is uh, cork. Oh, so I get it. So at the top of the smokestack, you take a giant cork and you just stick it in there. No. That's brilliant, Jesse. I, he's such a smart kid. No, okay, he? no, no, no. We're, we, so we're using cork, the plant cork. Oh, like wine bottle cork. Like wine bottle cork kind of thing. So basically the, the plant's roots uh, have been genetically modified to, to use more of the substance that grabs CO2 and keeps it in the plant itself. So we did the numbers, and the numbers say you need about 5% of the world's farmland growing highly enriched Subaran crops to fix 50% of all the CO2 that we're putting up there. So what is Subaran? Subaran is this plant material that absorbs, or that is very rich in the constituents of CO2. So the plants have to grab CO2 from the atmosphere to, uh, to make it. Just like when you breathe in and grab oxygen out of the air, they're gonna be grabbing the CO2 out of the air and then they're gonna be storing it in their roots. So if we were to grow 5% of the world's farmland with these genetically modified plants, we could solve 50% of the world's CO2 that we're putting into the atmosphere. Right. Wow, that I is mean, it. I mean, but is it the solution? I mean, five percent of the world's farmland is an enormous amount of land. True. I want to stress that. Like, that's this is not like some easy fix to climate change. Oh boy, we figured it out. Here's a bunch of seeds. Go fix it. I mean, I just like that it's a it's a possible. It solution. is a possible solution, and I think that it'll probably be you know one of the many pieces that's going to have to come together to solve. Uh, global climate change. All right, so what is this I hear that the CEO of Boeing says that they're going to beat SpaceX to Mars? Yeah, so in a tweet he said that they're going to beat SpaceX to Mars, and then Elon tweeted back. He said, do it. That's, I love you, That's cool. That's I mean, really that's cool. cool. Yeah, stop talking, make it happen. Yeah, I mean, let's see who's the first one to Mars. Yeah. First manned mission to Mars. I'm excited to yeah, see. Yeah, what, what rocket will it be? And who will it be? Maybe it'll be one of you. Ooh. So last week there was a conference on neural information processing systems and Tesla was there and they uh, made some pretty bold statements about their AI hardware. So Elon said uh, that their AI hardware could be the best in the world. He went on to say that they're actually developing their own AI chips. So we, we had known before that they were you know, using like Nvidia and other mm -hmm. companies, but now it sounds like they're actually making their own chips. I think one of the reasons Elon was at this conference was to recruit these neural processing experts and engineers mm -hmm. to work for Tesla. So allegedly, Elon was talking to a group of important people at a fireside chat, and uh, it was kind of leaked that he said that in two years, Tesla will have fully self-driving cars, three years, for an order of magnitude better than humans. What hmm. does that mean? What is an order of magnitude better than humans? Order of magnitudes are, you know, 10 times more. So excellent. basically he's saying that in two years, fully self-driving cars that are probably equivalent to what we are, mm -hmm. then one more year to get to a level that's 10 times better than humans. Wow. Now, I do want to point out, Elon two years ago said that he was two years away from fully self-driving cars. So, where what does that put us? Well, I think that Elon had always is sort of ahead of himself. Um, you can notice that when he talks, uh, just the way he speaks, he's always kind of a little bit ahead of himself, mm -hmm. which is a bad analogy for the fact that he thinks that he can do more than actually he can do. I think that he has uh, very high expectations and that they aren't always met. I think that two years ago when he said that, Tesla had just kind of made their split from Mobileye mm -hmm. and was beginning their own Tesla uh, AI department. Yeah. And he at that time they got some new people, people like Jim Keller, who is the VP of hardware. Um, he was poached from AMD two years ago. Mm -hmm. I think it's taken a couple of years to get those people up to speed working on this technology. I think Elon is so smart, he thinks that everyone can just start day one and right. get, you know, on the ground running. I think it's taken them a while, but I think now they've got the chips, they've got the people, they've got the whole department. I think they're, that's why he knows a little bit better how long it's gonna take. All right, so Tesla has uh, semi pre-orders coming in by the dozens every day. I mean, so we just heard that Anheuser-Busch InBev, which is 
uh, Bud, they ordered 40 trucks. Mm -hmm. um, we just heard, and they want to do this to reduce the environmental impact and increase the efficiency of its operations. Yep. Who else have we heard from? We've also heard from food distributor Cisco announced that it is uh, it has placed 50 reservations. We've also heard from Walmart, obviously, that they're going to have 15 trucks. Yeah, when we were there that night, mm -hmm. uh, reservations cost five thousand dollars okay. deposit. Then I think just a day or two later, it was announced that they're twenty thousand dollars. Interesting. So if you do the math, twenty thousand dollars times the number of deposits that, like for instance, Cisco just put down, mm -hmm. that's one point eight million dollars. That's just from Cisco. Right. So Tesla is definitely getting an injection of cash here to help them build out the semi truck. And I also think that it really shows a dedication or at least a, a very highly peaked interest from all of these different companies. Um, yeah, because if you weren't interested and you were Walmart, you might buy one truck. Right. And but I they're think, buying dozens. Right. And, you know, 40 trucks and 50 trucks, you know, from here and there, it's going to add up to be quite a lot of money in reservations, and it's gonna end up being a lot of trucks. Um, I think that this is gonna be very exciting to see them, them roll onto the roads and, and see what these companies have to say about them because 50 trucks for Cisco is, is not that many. But moving forward, if they like the Tesla truck, we're gonna be seeing more and more and more. Right. Um, you know, They're just gonna basically ditch diesel trucks and switch over to electrics as soon as they realize that they can do it. Um, I'm so excited because that means that emissions are going to be getting so much better. Right. And, you know, we're talking about CO2 emissions, but we're also talking about just pollution in general. Yes. Each truck that you see on the road creates an enormous amount of pollution. I mean, you can see it when you're driving behind them. Right. All of the smoke that comes out when they're changing gears and stuff like that. And they um, run hundreds of thousands of miles a year. Right. So every truck that gets replaced is just a huge win. So, you know, there's Model 3 news, Jesse, and I think uh, a better place to do that would be in the Model 3. All right, let so, me just quickly activate my device here. Wait, you have a Whoa. Whoa, that's cool. Yeah. All right, so I guess the Model 3 can now show you supercharger availability. Can you explain that? So as you can see here, all I need to do to see the charging availability is hit this little lightning bolt button here, and then all the superchargers pop up, and we can see how many people are charging at each location. All right, so about three weeks ago, Tesla sent out notifications to people uh, that had been first day reservation holders in California that they could start to configure. We just heard that a whole bunch of new reservation holders got their uh, notification that they can configure. Mm -hmm. And they were told that four weeks will be the delivery time. So a whole bunch of new people are gonna be getting Model 3s really soon. That's super excited, very excited for you. Also, we hear that there's no lease options yet, but Tesla is offering in-house financing at a rate of 2.74 APR with $5,000 down and 72 months. So maybe you can start to plug that into your calculators and start to calculate uh, if that makes sense for you. Now check this Reddit chart out, Jesse. This is a chart of VIN numbers for the Model 3 and some cool new ones have just popped up in the 2000s. So it, does this look like we're going uh, exponential to you? So it depends on whether or not you want to give credit to these three points, basically. There's three points here that if you believe them, look like um, sort of an exponential, that the, that the growth, the amount of Model 3s in the world is increasing exponentially, meaning that production is increasing. Um, you know me, I want to believe. Yeah, I think that um, even if you don't take those three points into consideration, um, it still looks like that there is a ton of growth. You can see that that um, the top of the curve of, of all these points is growing and, and growing, growing. <laughs> growing, it's growing. accelerating. Exponential. Yeah. And lastly, for Model 3 news, the LA Delivery Center just opened, which is a fantastic sign. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some pictures here of Model 3s in the parking lot. They look kind of dusty. Could this be from the forest fires that have been happening? Uh, yeah, it, it's or, definitely possible. Or they've just been sitting here for a really long time. All right. Well, or time machines. <laughs> what? That's the only other explanation. <laughs> so if you're in the LA area, please let us know if you get to use this new cool delivery center, which is near Marina Del Rey in Southern California. All right, let's go back to the studio. All right, let me uh, just find my device here and... Whoa! Oh, okay. Wow. Uh -huh. wow. Hey, it works, That's right? fast. Yeah. So, you know, last week we were talking about 
there are four states that have battery storage mandates. Mm -hmm. California, Oregon, Massachusetts, and New York. Welcome, New York. So last week, Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker announced that they awarded the University of Massachusetts Amherst a $1.1 million state grant from the Advancing Commonwealth Energy Storage, or ACES, project to work with Tesla Energy mm -hmm. to construct a large battery at the central heating plant on the west side of campus. So what is this battery? So this is a one megawatt or four megawatt hour lithium ion battery storage system that uses Tesla power packs. That's so exciting. So, I mean, UMass already has seven solar installations on their rooftops and on their parking lot canopies, which is 5.3 megawatts of capacity, and they plan to use the Tesla batteries to reduce their reliance on the grid. UMass has said that they believe that they will have one of the most sophisticated power microgrids in the state. Yeah, Shane Conklin, who's the Associate Vice Chancellor for Facilities and Campus Services, said about the project, not only will we see utility budget savings, our project will provide on-campus data to support research, and Tesla will provide $80,000 of educational initiatives for our students. Interesting. Now, this is interesting because if you couple this with the fact that last year Tesla Energy put a 12 megawatt hour power pack um, at Cal State mm -hmm. and a 5.3 million dollar power pack project at the College of Marin, these are places I think that Tesla wants to be getting new students, uh, you know, graduating students mm -hmm. to come work for them. Right. And so, so really smart. Yeah. I mean, you're you're infusing. You're first of all. You have a presence on campus. There are batteries that say Tesla on them. Right. And you know when when you're a new student and they're giving tours, they're probably going to point it out as they're walking to the to the dining hall or whatever. Plus, and then, I mean, all this money like that they're doing for educational initiatives. Absolutely. Like, so getting, you could like, get Tesla a Tesla scholarship. Notebooks and Tesla. Well, yeah, you get a Tesla scholarship. Right. And you know, all of a sudden, you know, people hear about that because that's money. Um, and yeah, you're creating a buzz on campus, and you're you're able to. Yeah, Get have interested new, people right. and just pulling them into into your company. Yeah. All right, so what is this, Jesse? It looks awfully familiar. Um, I thought we had already reported on this. So this is the Renault Symbios. Oh, so yeah, this, we, this, no, we already reported on we this. We have already reported on this, but there are some new... There's some new... Uh, no, this doesn't look new, Jesse, it's, because I no, remember... No, 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 no. No, so, because th remember the car drove into the living room and we were commenting how dumb it is to drive your car into your living room. Right, so let's just... Skip to let's skip to the chase here. Okay. Basically, it was first presented as a vision for 2030. Okay. But now they're giving us a much closer goal uh, of 2023. Oh, okay. So seven years. Seven years sooner. earlier than we were expecting. So let's just cut to this house, which I don't know. I don't know about this house. Let me because it's all glass on all the sides. Mm -hmm. I can understand. What are you afraid of getting changed? Or I something don't, in the house like. Uh... I, I mean, first of all, heat. Oh, yeah, heat loss. Uh, second of, second of all, privacy. Mm -hmm. And third of all, it doesn't look like a house. It looks like... Okay, but let's talk like about a, the car. Okay, let's talk about the car. The car looks like, uh, kind of like what we have now, with like a Model S kind of Right, car. but with a lot of cool, funky things it, slapped all over it. does it. have some cool things. So Renault partnered with LG, who developed the display, mm -hmm. has curved glass technology in the heads-up display. Um, also, TomTom Tom worked on the map and navigation Tom Tom. system. Have and I heard of Tom? I haven't heard of TomTom Tom since like 2006. Well, maybe they're back. And then Ubisoft developed the onboard experience. So, um, what? They're a gaming company. Well, maybe you need, I mean, he is wearing these these goggles. Maybe you want to game while you're yes. in the car. Yes, okay, so let's talk about this. So when yeah. we see him driving the car, he first has it in manual mode. He's driving right. the car with his hands. Because it's fun. It's fun, yeah. And then he gets to the highway mm -hmm. and he puts it into autopilot. There's nothing like that today on the road. So, which we've seen, like, normally if you're driving a Tesla, you don't put it in autopilot in local roads. You can, right. but you don't usually. Right. And then you get to the highway and you probably want to put it into autopilot. So that's what he does here. Then we see him sort of what I would call sort of autonomous level two. Um, he's paying, paying attention to the road. But then he stops paying attention. And then he stops paying attention to the road. He sort of like goes back. So is he in autopilot three or four now? I would say that this is probably autopilot four. Okay. Um, and I think this is what a lot of car manufacturers are claiming to go to. You still have a steering wheel, but for the most part, it's hands off. And you play. you get to play with things. Right. It seems like it's only level four 
autonomous on the highway. Right. Because we never see him doing it off right. the highway. And we could be reading into this too much. Yeah, anyway, I I guess what's kind of funny about this is that, you know, for 2030, that was just, they must have realized that's mm-hmm. way too far off. They moved it to 2023. I think that's still too far off. Right. Um, Renault has already announced that it has plans to launch eight more all-electric vehicles within the next five years. So it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. Right. And I don't want to be insulting Renault here. I mean, they... Their Zoe is a great vehicle. Right. Lots of people love it. They're hyperbole about this being, you know, something that no one else has ever experienced. Um, I think is a little over the top because I think that we are experiencing a lot of that today. Right. And realistically, the things that they're bringing forward in this video, if you were to like, as a concept, it's very interesting. But if you were to bring it into the real world you'd be left with something that was probably just like a Model S today. Right. What is this, Jesse? I think I heard about it a year or so ago, um, but w- why are we talking about it? So this is Facebook's solar drone. Basically, they wanted a way to provide internet to places that don't have it. They're mm-hmm. kind of remote. And so they came up with this solar-powered drone that would fly in just in a big circle. And yeah, and it uses lasers to... Uh, communicate with the ground it's like uh, that I'm sounds cool not entirely sure how the internet part works but basically half of the weight of this would be batteries wow so and and the whole wing is a big solar yeah it's a collector. 100, 141 feet of wingspan that's mm-hmm. greater than a boeing 737 right um it's a 900 pound plane but like jesse said half of that is batteries mm-hmm. and the goal is to fly between 60 and 90 thousand feet and stay up there for 90 days at a time Right. And it uses as much power as about three hair dryers, so about 5,000 watts, Wow, which is pretty amazing. Yep. The problem is um, that they haven't actually gotten it to do any of the things like that. It hasn't run on solar power yet, and it hasn't used any of its communication systems. And now they're retiring the plane. And it's going into a museum. I mean, it's interesting to see that Facebook wants to do what, what Tesla wants to do, right? right. Which is, or SpaceX wants to do, which is to get communication to the parts of the world that can't get it. 1.6 billion people don't have access to the internet. That's a lot of people. Right. And, and this would the help The internet is it. really big. Right. And full of lots of interesting stuff, including this. Right. This website that you're watching this video on. It was a good sort of idea. Um, I'm not sure if it was the best way to, to make it happen. We have communication satellites that are orbiting our Earth and have been for, for years and years. I think that a plane has a lot more complexity yeah. than just a big chunk of computer that you're, you've hurled into space and is just sort of floating around orbiting the Earth. All right, time for the lightning round. Here we go. All right, so there's a new store and Tesla service center in Malmo, Sweden, and we are just so lucky. We have some pictures of that store. Yeah, our buddy Lars in Sweden sent these to us, so mm-hmm. we are kind of getting the exclusive deal from our viewers. Thank you so much for sending these in. You know, Jesse, we talked about the Chinese city that got 14,000 buses, electric buses. Yeah. I just found out that China has put 120,000 electric buses onto the streets of China this year. London just made a big deal about putting 120 buses onto the streets. China is just, talk about, when they do something, they do it such a enormous scale. They do, they do scale. it big. They do it they big. They do it big. Speaking of London, the LEVC black cabs have hit the London streets. Now, LEVC stands for the London EV Company, and it's a owned by a Chinese company, Geely. Mm-hmm. Um, they raised $400 million last year, and they started production earlier this year. And last week, the first few cars hit the streets of London. Mm -hmm. They expect that they will have 9,000 more going onto the roads in the next few years. Wow. This is the TX E-City car. It has a range of about 80 miles on a single charge. Now, it does have a 1.5 liter petrol range extender. But, Hmm. hey. And Tesla wins in Missouri. The Missouri Court of Appeals three-judge panel has overturned a lower court decision from 2015 that prevented Tesla from renewing its in-state dealer license. So now the showroom in Kansas City and University City are open and ready for business. Tesla has won in Missouri. Woo. All right, we've got our video contributors, and this week we've got two. The first one is Howard. Howard, take it away in Sweden. Hello, Jesse and Zach. Real quickly, five wows on the car. Why would somebody want to buy this? and not a Tesla Model 3? Um, I think if you buy a Tesla Model 3, this one's designed to be the second family car beside it. So Tesla Model 3 is still a long range, you know, fairly premium family sedan. This is designed to be the second family car that you use to drive around the city. Much more nicer price range, 
Um, it's certainly a little more advanced in terms of the look and feel and the user experience. So it's designed to be a bit more like premium consumer electronics. So it's the next car, I would say, after the Tesla. Designed to be a complimentary product, really. So two-seater or a four or five-seater, but just for around your city. 300 kilometers range. Still very good performance. Not to 80 kilometers in about 3.5 seconds in sports mode or spaceship mode. Uh, so not, not as fast also. So we'll beat a Tesla. At least the Model 3, the cheap one. Oh, do they? Is that? I, mean, I think when, they're 5.2 or 5.4 seconds, depending which battery. Oh, okay. So you are faster. Oh, great. So. Uh, but I would, you want to compete on like who's <laughs> faster and that kind of stuff. I mean, uh, it's significantly more sustainable for what you use because obviously it's a lightweight vehicle which requires a lot less battery to get a lot further. So in other words, it's designed for the technology that it houses, designed for the modern problems, the modern usage patterns, uh, and certainly the kind of consumer electronics that we love today. Uh, it's a little more that approach. In, in pounds, uh, what's the weight of this? Approximately. In pounds? Geez. Well, give me in kilos. Okay, so uh, dry weight, so without the battery, 450 kilograms. Okay. With the batteries? So then you're, you know, 500 uh, up to 550, depending on the size of the battery. Okay. So that's 1,100, 1,200 pounds. Yeah, something like that. So it's it's almost one quarter the weight of Model 3, which I believe is somewhere around 4,000. Exactly. Now let's consider the biggest environment. So you just need a quarter size battery. Yeah, and the, the environmental impact is also a quarter of a size oh, as yeah. well, and the cost to the customer and the cost of production. So we can take that cost, that value, and pass it on to the customer in the form of a, a, a better price, but we can also focus on much more traditionally expensive materials to make the experience better. But you will have a, you'll have a two, a four, and a five-seater. Correct. So somebody with the Model 3 may not have too much to complain about. Absolutely. Because you can still put five people in it. Absolutely. Well, I mean, the, the Model 3 or any of them, you know, you can't, a lot of families can't just have this car. But if they have the Model 3 and they have this this other little runaround car, you know, I think this beats that. As a commuter vehicle for your daily commuter, I mean, it, I think it's the best commuter vehicle in the world. I mean, if you're living here in Sweden, you don't even pay for energy for five years and it's all solar energy. So the, the, like from a financial perspective, from a consumer electronics or design or user experience or sustainability or whatever you like, uh, it's, a, it's just a different machine. Thanks for letting me take a video. Ah, thanks, man. Nice to meet you, man. Okay. And uh, nice to meet you guys. See ya. Okay. Bye. Wow, that's awesome. I, Unity so cool. is such an exciting company. It was mm -hmm. so cool to see all that. And I mean, to Howard got the CEO to talk to him yeah. and to say hello to us. I mean, wow, you guys are great. Thank you. Let's go to another car show that happened just recently, the LA Auto Show. Uh, our friend Stuart went to the auto show and took some great footage and photos. Hey, so we're seeing some really cool shots here of the Tesla Model 3. Yep. That looks eerily familiar. Yeah, I. it's, it's like I've seen it recently. Yeah, it's like it was in a dream or something. Right. And then what is this? This looks like the Tesla solar house. Yes, so I guess a house completely run on solar? Yeah, it's got a power pack on the front, a power pack on the back. It's got solar on the top. It's 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 completely run off the grid. That's really I cool. I would love to tow this behind the semi mm -hmm. and just live in it. So thank you so much, Stuart, for showing us awesome footage of the LA Auto Show. So it's time for the Patreon bonus story of the week. If you want to see it, you can head over to patreon.com, support us for as little as a dollar a month, and you get access to four Patreon bonus stories in that month. Plus early footage of stuff, stuff that's only for Patreons. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty cool. And if you want to support more, there's plenty of really fun perks. Um, so definitely head over and check that out. Let's go. All right, we're back from our Patreon bonus story and we want to give a shout out this week to a bunch of Patreon supporters who support us at $5 or more a month. Mm -hmm. So thank you this week to Kent Yee, Jay Doherty, Mark Moaning, David Shankster, Travis Stowers, Jason Buies, Uwe Franca, and Jack Fries. Thank you guys. All right, it's time for Elon's tweet of the week. Here now we already had that one that said, do it. Uh, so can you top it this right. week? Right, 
Um, so I think he might have. <laughs> and I want to thank Jeffrey, by the way. Our friend Jeffrey uh, always keeps track of these tweets of the week because mm-hmm. Elon tweets a lot, and he keeps track of them for us. So thank you, Jeffrey. All right. So, All right, so what did he say? So on Tuesday, that's today, SpaceX will attempt to refly both an orbital rocket and spacecraft for the first. And then he put this Instagram showing basically that uh, so what he's talking about here is they've already reflown Falcon 9s before, mm-hmm. but now they're also reflying a the, Dragon capsule. Right. So reused, I mean, talk about reuse and recycle. Yeah. He's reusing both the rocket and the capsule. Right. So, I mean, that's a huge percentage of the rocket um, that you see being launched is going to be reused, refurbished. That's amazing. Rocketry stuff. It's awesome. That's great. All right, it's time for a new segment that we're going to try out. This is called Community Mail Time. Community Mail Time. Here we go. We might need a little song. I don't know. Brent and Bobby are for, up for a little, little ditty they could write. Community Mail Time. This is our buddy John, and he got his new Model S this week. And look what he's wearing. Nice shirt, Very buddy. Very classy. Nice. Here is our buddy Elon. Little Elon. Yes, little Elon. Um, and his sister. And they're reading about Elon. Yep. In Rolling Stone. Big Elon. They're reading about Big Elon in Rolling Stone, <laughs> yes. And I want to cut to our friend Michael out in L.A. He's uh, going to tell us about this thing that he just spotted. Hey, Zach and Jesse. This is Michael from Los Angeles. I'm an audio engineer here, and I just pulled up to my office late, and there's this Model 3 just sitting here. And it's beautiful. It's blue, and it just looks amazing. Here's a look at the front. And it's somebody from SpaceX. I would have thought that would be at a music studio, but they're here, it's exciting, and uh, I love your channel, so keep rocking. Wow, hey. so they're popping up all over the place. Very cool, Michael. Um, it looks good in blue. It does look good in blue. All right, so every week we like to do a viewer comment. Um, yeah, we get these out of the comments below the news, so mm-hmm. make sure you leave us some good comments. So what does this one say? Oh, you know what? Do you have an app for this? Uh, actually, so I've been doing, you know... Christmas shopping. I uh, found this cool little doodad on Amazon. Let's just check oh, really? this one out. Yeah. Robo Remotive says Hi guys, don't get a CDL. If you use the Tesla truck for personal purposes, no CDL is necessary. Rider truck rentals can rent you heavy trucks over 18,000 pounds. GVW without a CDL because you are moving your own belongings. You can even drive a tractor trailer without a CDL if it's your belongings or race car. Interesting. So is that true? I don't know if that's true. I mean, it makes sense, like, you know, because we wouldn't be doing it as a commercial thing, but I kind of thought that you needed to have special skills and special, you know, abilities. Right, I wouldn't want just anyone driving around a giant tractor trailer. This isn't GTA. Like I would, so, I would hope. I mean, I, I, I'd be cool if you're right. Although I yeah. did want to become a teamster. But um, can can people who know more about this, like, give give your thoughts below? Like, mm-hmm. do, anyone who has experience with this, anyone who's actually been able to drive without the CDL license, right? Because it would be good to know. And you guys are the experts. You guys are the truckers out there. Yeah, so. I think it's CDL. L stands for license. Oh, I'm sorry. C C stands for. Stands for certificate commercial of drive commercial, commercial driver license? license. I have no idea. We have no idea. Yeah, let us know. Let us know. All right. So superchargers. Hey, you know, remember last week how we got a supercharger review from the fifty stall in Shanghai? Yeah. There's another fifty stall supercharger, and we've got a review of it. Awesome. Here it is. Ni hao, Zach and Jesse. My name is Dima. I'm from Ukraine, but I live in Beijing. So we are at the biggest Tesla supercharger in the world. We have 50 stalls here, and while you're waiting for your Tesla to charge, you can have a walk uh, around the area behind me, or you can have a Chinese meal in a nearby uh, shopping mall. But if you are a Westerner and you want to have a cup of coffee, you better bring it with you. This is Dima in Beijing. Zaizi. Wow. What great viewers we have that they just took up the, the challenge and went out there and filmed it for us. Yeah, thank you so much. That That's rocks. so cool. Yeah. I'm just blown away by how big it is. Um, we have more superchargers, so let's take a look at those. All right. Hi, Zach. Hi, Jesse. This is Tesla 8. I'm here in San Clemente, California at the 20 stall supercharger that just opened up today. Um, it's all right off the 5. Um, if you're going from Orange County down to uh, San Diego, um, 
We're at the outlets. There's a uh, Starbucks. There's a Ruby's Slapfish Panera Bread. Um, there's a lot of parking. Um, it's plenty of charters. And I think it'll be pretty full by next weekend for Thanksgiving. Hey, Zach and Jesse. Jason Pace from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Lime Ridge Mall with a 20 superchargers to be installed. 10 done so far. One of the largest ones around here. Big, definitely the biggest one will be in Hamilton. Lime Ridge Mall has everything you could ever want. Every restaurant. But uh, no hotels in the area, so I would rate it a 9 out of 10. What do you say, guys? This is Fort Wayne, Indiana Supercharger just opened. And um, it's a very good location because if you're driving from Indianapolis to Detroit, this is a very good uh, place to charge. Be uh, previously, you have to like divert a little bit to go to Lima, Ohio to charge but um, I think this is a very good location. You have a uh, restaurant, hotels, gas station, uh, pretty good location. Hey, Zach and Jesse, it's Logan Davis from Logan's Life here, coming at you at another supercharger here in Cadillac, Michigan. Uh, this one has just recently been built, and as you guys said, it was under construction. And here is an eight stall Tesla supercharger. As we can see around us, there's a Culver's right over there. There is a Meyer Home Depot, and unfortunately, I don't think there are any trash cans around. I know you guys are always asking for trash cans at Tesla Superchargers. I'm not sure if there's free Wi-Fi, but yeah, this has been Logan Davis from my YouTube channel, Logan's Life. Thank you guys, yeah. because you guys go all over the place and film Superchargers and send them to us. Thank you so much. All right, so let's talk about other Superchargers. Oh, I'm excited this week, Jesse. Yeah. You're right. gonna find out why. All right, so permitted this week right. in you're hungry. King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. Boy, it took everything in my power not to make a joke about the hungry one. But, I mean. What, I mean, King of Prussia. That, I know, but you're hungry. Come oh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get it. San Luis Obispo, California. Augusta, Georgia, at Washington Crossing. Now get this, Jesse, Seekonk, Massachusetts. Seekonk. I don't know where that one is. It's right here on the map, Jess. Oh, I mean, I <laughs> sorry, I can't see it. And Woburn, Mass. Wow, they're popping up all over Massachusetts. Yeah. All right, under construction in... Coffs Harbor, New South Wales, Australia. Are you sure that it's not... Oh, I double-checked it. <laughs> okay, cool. Langstone, UK. Strongville, Ohio. Mont Tremblant. Quebec, Canada. Get this, Framingham, Massachusetts. Ah, we have to mispronounce that one. It's uh, Framingham. And Hadley, Mass. Wow, a lot going up in Massachusetts. This, this is, is very exciting for us. Uh, because but we're not over yet. What? Yeah. What? Oh my gosh, Hang in there. open ones. Okay, uh, let's see. Number 32 in Canada and 1066 in the world, the 12 stall in Tawasin, British Columbia. I think you got it. Yeah, because I think I said Sawasin last week and I think it's Tawasin. Very good. Uh, number 440 in the USA is the 10 stall in Boston, Mass. Wow, at the, at South, the South Bay, Bay Center. Center. Nice. I, I want to go check this one out and see if it's the urban ones, which are like the half um, kilowatt. Right. Or, or not. So we'll, maybe you can beat us to it. I don't know. An 8 stall in Mount Jackson, Virginia. Number 21 in Hong Kong is the four stall in Hong Kong, China at CityGate. Man, there are so many in Hong Kong. Yeah. Number 175 in China, the four stall in Shangrao, China at Wan Li Square. The six stall at Zhangjiakou, Hualai, Wanyu Plaza, China. And the 10th stall at Guangzhou Mahui Furniture Mall, China. The eight stall at Alamuk, Czech Republic. And number 355 in Europe, the 12 stall in Voss, Norway. And number 33 in Canada, 1073 in the world is the 20 stall in Barry, Bayfield Street, Ontario. Wow, I am so excited about these Massachusetts superchargers. I, I wanna go visit them all when they're open. And we'll probably have to bring the Model 3. Oh yeah. Maybe, just maybe, 
we could uh, maybe just do our Patreons or maybe to just people on Facebook. Oh, like a little meetup. Sort of or something. little meetups, you know, see cool. them all three. And the new charter. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. That'd be pretty Christy. exciting. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Yeah, because I mean, that would be like the first time that a Model 3 had charged there, most likely. Most right? likely. I mean, Come on, record book. We, we need yeah. like a Tesla we're, Guinness Book of World Records. We're in that book, <laughs> for sure. So if you are interested in getting a ride in the Roadster, mm -hmm. we are pretty much all full, we're told, by Tesla of our referrals in the US, but we are giving out a referral code that you can use to help us get our European Roadster. So contact us on Facebook. I know that was really complicated. And we will give you the details and you can still get that ride in the US. So yep. let us know about that. I wanna talk about a video that we uh, just did. It is the 360 experience in the Model 3. So if you wanna see what it feels like to sit in the Model 3, both in the driver, in the passenger, and in the back seat, and you can sort of see what it might be like to drive in the Model 3. And you can look all around. So if yeah. you have your cell phone, mm -hmm. you just watch on your video, and as you move your phone, the what you're looking at changes, which is cool. If you're on your laptop or, or, or desktop, you have to you click and just drag, click and around. drag your mouse, but still, it's really pretty cool. I also wanna mention that Seth and Fred from Electric, are the best okay yep. you guys i mean you guys rock uh, we get a lot of our stories from electric so we put all the links down below if you want to read them but yep. anytime you need news about tesla and sustainability and solar mm -hmm. go to electric because those guys are just they work like non-stop mm -hmm. um i saw uh fred this week on cnbc like now he's branching out into television I know. so exciting to see you guys Thank you so much for all the work you do. They have a great new podcast you should check out um, where you can see these guys talking for a long period of time about all sorts of cool things. We urge you to go check them out. Thank you so much for joining us here on Tesla Time News. We'll see you next week. Now you know. <laughs>